Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today I actually wanted to talk to you guys about something that I talked to you about exactly a year ago, almost to the day. Since we're only a few short days away from celebrating our one year wedding anniversary and just come back around to the same subject that so many of you often ask me about. And that is the topic of being disowned and being estranged from my Pakistani family. So let's get right into it. So a year ago, I shared with you all that Sam and I had gotten married. We had a quarantine wedding. It was in not this apartment, but our old one bedroom apartment. We got married via Zoom with the courts. And the number one question that everybody had was, how did your family receive the information? And we're coming full circle now, coming on to a year. And the truth is, um, back then I shared that nobody knew. And the truth is that a year later, I am almost positive that the news is out because of course I come from a Desi family. Of course, people are creeping on my social media. Of course, people are gossiping because that's just a part of our family's dynamics and what our culture does. So it's been a year. I have since spoken with my father. Um, my father has never acknowledged that I'm married, but, there's a big but, he does ask me how my husband is. He will specifically say, how is Sam? Eid just passed and he sent me a text and said, Eid Mubarak to you and Sam. I still haven't spoken to my mom, however. Um, and I really wanted to sit down to make this video and I actually sent everybody out of the room because I was honest and I said, this is a very, a vulnerable and touchy subject for me and in order for me to be just straight up and straightforward and honest with you guys which is always the goal I needed to do so with nobody else in the room so last year when the pandemic hit it was really hard for me and I don't know if I've ever publicly spoken about it the reason it was so hard was because there was so much confusion in the world and nobody knew exactly what was going on in terms of COVID and there was just so much uncertainty and fear surrounding it. And I remember for the first part of it, um, I had so much anxiety. I think so many of us did. And I couldn't stop thinking about my family. And for some reason specifically, I couldn't stop thinking about my mom. And I had so many dreams about her last year. And I, oddly enough, kept thinking about like her cooking, like her Haka Kana, and if you are they see you know that there's almost like nothing like eating food that your mom cooks it was almost like there was times where i could taste it and it was such a weird feeling to me and this was all leading up before we got married and then i guess as time went on as we started to like learn more about what was going on in the world and learning how to navigate this new normal this pandemic it slowly started to just kind of disperse on its own but here we are, like I said, a whole year later, and I wanted to share with you guys exactly where I am mentally today and how I feel. Still being disowned, still being estranged, still not really having um, had any acknowledgement of the fact that I've even gone and done this super major thing that we do in life and a milestone is coming up. And I wanted to be 100% raw and honest with you guys. And the truth is there's been so much work done in the last year that I've done individually with the help of not only my husband, but our therapist. And that part, you guys, it's, it's, it's gonna sound crazy, but sometimes it's easier to sit in these sessions and to dig up all your feelings and emotional stuff. The real work, like the stuff that actually sticks is what happens in my quiet moments, in my silent times when I'm completely alone. And I think as a result, I've just come to terms with so much. I think even if you go back and watch the video from a year ago, which I highly recommend that everybody do if you're watching this, go back and watch the video from a year ago, I was almost at a sense of peace even then. For me, so much of my life has been about wanting to be happy. I remember when I was 19 and I was being potentially set up for an arranged marriage situation and the guy that I was talking to and getting to know asked me, what do you want in life? And I said, I just want to be happy. And he was a little bit older than me. And I remember he started laughing and made fun of me and said, that's so vague. Like, there's no specifics in that. Like, what does that even mean to you? And the truth is, I was 19. I'm 33 now. My answer would not change. 
the answer remains that my mission has always be, been to be happy. But here's the kicker. What does happiness look like to you? Because what it looks like to me will not be the same as what it looks like to the next person. So in order for me to have really discovered true, true, true happiness in terms of defining it for me, I had to learn to let go of the expectations that so many of us hold on to when it comes to not only family, but friends, spouses, etc. I learned a long time ago, and I had to accept it, that I could not control how other people chose to show up or not show up in my life. And when I was able to relinquish that idea that I could ever change anybody's mind or get them to see me or to see my heart or to see that there was nothing wrong with my decisions, I slowly started to live a more free life that was detached from so much of the stuff I had no control over. I am so excited, I am so grateful to be celebrating one whole year of being married to one of the greatest men that I've ever known. There has been so much growth, not only had as individuals, but as a team. And there have been absolutely no regrets. And I know that there probably never will be because I'm not a person who regrets anything, but more so because I really believe that I married who God put on this earth for me to be with. And I don't believe in soulmates. And that's the honest to God truth. I don't believe in soulmates. I just don't think that there's only one person out of almost 8 billion people in this world that you're supposed to be with. But I do believe that what I was seeking was a partner in purpose. And I got exactly that. And I got just the right partner that I needed. And it's just been, it's been an amazing year. It doesn't feel like, I, I don't know, maybe it doesn't feel like we've been married. I don't know if it's because we maybe already were so close in our relationship. Um, I will say, <laughs> because somebody actually told me, a friend of mine, she's like, no, it will feel different saying husband. It feels nice to say husband. I will say that. Um, there's been some things that maybe Sam and I will discuss in a different video, probably on the podcast about some things that did bother me in terms of how we went about things. And then I want you guys to hear how it is that I've worked through those things and where I am currently in mentally in terms of how we went about getting married. But other than that, um, I'm so excited to celebrate next week. Um, I'm so looking forward to just, I don't know, just being immersed in that time with my husband and being present and just looking back on the year and then talking about all the amazing future plans and goals that we have for our life. Now, one of the number one questions that I do receive is, do you miss anything about family? Do you miss anything about culture? To be honest, guys, I've created a new normal for me and a new happy. And once I let go of things, there is no looking back for me. So in order for me to be fully present here and fully show up as a dope wife for my husband, I let go of a lot of things and a lot of what we've created is our new traditions and our new normals going forward. You know, in terms of family still not kind of coming around or acknowledging it, I do often get asked as well, do you think that it'll ever be something that is accepted? Now, if I'm being completely honest with you and you're watching this and you're in the same boat, I can only speak for me. The truth is that I do not think that my marriage will ever be accepted, nor do I think that my family and I will ever come together the way that I once hoped we would. But that doesn't mean that your family won't come around or that your parents won't accept your partner. I can only speak for the people that I know that I was raised around and they're sticking by their guns. And I know for sure that no amount of grandchildren or anything is gonna change that. And I'm okay with it. Here's the other kicker. When people do talk about family potentially coming back, that actually makes me a teeny tiny bit uncomfortable for the simple fact of this. My husband and I made a pact last year that nobody would be allowed back into our home that we've worked so hard to make a peaceful and just loving place unless they show real change, unless there's real apologies given 
and unless there's been work put in from them to show up better. I don't hide the fact that I was raised in and around immense dysfunction. I finally got my second chance at a real family. And I'm not gonna cry because that's not what this video is about. This video is about joy. But if you do see me tear up, these are all happy tears, I promise. Sometimes in life, we go through different experiences and we wish and we hope and we pray for certain things. And then one day you look up and you actually have these answered prayers in front of you and a lot of things that just happen to come true, but they may not look the way that you wanted them to or that you had anticipated that they would. It's important to stay open and to just keep your eyes aware of how your prayers can show up in different forms. And one thing that I always prayed for was to have my own family or to have a loving family. And I got that tenfolds with my husband. And we so look forward to expanding and just growing our family and adding more individuals into it to love and you know to just immerse in all the good stuff that we work so hard to maintain every day in our relationship so if you're watching this i just want to let you know i probably said this last year in the video sharing about the similar topic but don't give up on love you can't go wrong with love keep your heart open and real love that has no conditions and no bounds doesn't often look the way that you think it might. I know that for me, I had to learn to redefine love and to also learn that what I thought it was, it wasn't actually that. So happy one year almost anniversary to us. And if you're watching this, please like, subscribe, leave a comment. And as always, don't forget to reach out and know that I am wishing you well. I'm rooting for you guys. Happiness is so possible. And family is what you make of it. So I'm wishing you well on your journey. Talk soon.